Hey everyone, uh, good, morning. good morning. Welcome to uh, a special Friday edition of Valiant Live. I'm Matt Fox, I'm the creative director here at Valiant. Uh, that's just me saying I do marketing, but I make things unnecessarily complex. Um, <laughs> <laughs> unnecessarily creative, yes. <laughs> and um, today is Friday, it's not a Thursday, it's also 10 o'clock, it's not 10.30. We're doing things at a slightly different time this week because uh, when prepping our episode for you guys, we uh, took what's normally a 20 minute conversation and it went for over an hour. And that was just over the sheer right. excitement of being able to deliver this. So we wanted to make sure that we got everything absolutely right. That's why we're here on a Friday. Uh, not only are we here, but we have a special guest, Jonathan Crow, who is the director of community content and community at Ninja RMM, a uh, big part of the uh, MSP community and someone that I work with on a regular basis on a, a project that we are working on. So thank you for joining us this morning. It's good to see you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys. Uh, TJF. I, I love the, I love the, the Friday, Friday feel of this already. Oh, it's like uh, perfect strangers. It's beautiful. Um, <laughs> and of course I've got, uh, our president George and our hey, CIO right. Justin with us today. Hello. And, um, Today's topic is actually going to be about tabletop exercises. It's something that we have talked about in the past, and today we're going to really delve in and talk about what they are, how they help your business, and we are also going to simulate a tabletop that we came up with. And if you're watching right now and you'd like to join us, uh, you could always download a free copy of the template that we're going to be using today and use it for your own as well. Uh, if you're seeing this recording, please go ahead and download and follow along. If you have any questions, you could always reach us. We love talking to people. If you have a question, you could always submit a question here at the link. Uh, you could visit our website and check out a little bit more about what we do. And of course, have a look at our YouTube channel. There's hours and hours of really great content and insight for small businesses there. Um, so now that I've done my overextended intro, which was fun, I've never done one of those before, <laughs> let's jump into it. Um, you know, George, why don't you tell us a little bit about what a tabletop exercise is? Just a definition. Sure, sure. Uh, that's great. Thanks, Matt. Uh, great intro, by the way. Uh, the tabletop is, is a, basically taking the folks in your organization or outside to simulate a, a disaster or an event or a situation. The idea here is... Uh, I think a lot of people go really deep into it and want to have this like really robust plan. You know, do you imagine this three ring binder orange book kind of thing where it's like this like war plan, you know, but really Opus it's 11. Opus 11, right, exactly. You know, <laughs> it's complicated, but really what it starts with is is sitting with your management team or your team. And, uh, and uh, actually the more people involved and, and the more uh, lower, the kind of to go through your organization, the lower you go through, you get more feedback from your staff is, is it walk through things that can go wrong and how you're going to respond to it and becomes a really great step in terms of putting together a um, your plan. Uh, you can't plan without having this, 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 I think it's almost impossible because what happens is I think a lot of times and just working with a lot, a lot of customers over the years, a lot of people have these business continuity plans and some of them are pretty robust, but they don't take into account the people that are actually doing the work. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of like some manager or some COO somewhere who, Kind of how this is what he or she thinks it's going to be without talking to the actual people. So that's why we love the tabletop. And also, I think it t dives into a little bit of the uh, kind of, uh, uh, I'll admit my, my inner nerd gamemanship yeah. of uh, kind of like role playing or yeah. uh, just kind of walking it through. So it's really interesting. So, yeah, for sure. Exactly. And I mean, yeah, to, to echo to that business continuity plan from as a you know, IT provider, lots of times that that term gets used to mean only the IT infrastructure. And yeah, that's just a fraction of it that it's, yeah. and as, as we'll see as we run through some of the examples, you know, having all of your servers up online is, is certainly important, but may not be the thing that actually that your business actually needs in order to weather uh, a storm right so, so this has to be as much about your people as it is your machines and exactly. uh, i think that's a part of what we're going to get through today mm -hmm. um yeah. so let's let's talk a little bit about how a tabletop is run before we go into anything else because sure. i think that it, in my mind it seems super official and then i start thinking about different movies and seeing people do things like i made that oceans 11 reference <laughs> you know and, and, and i'm sitting here and it's friday so this is what's going to happen but like you know in the, in the movie aliens they get down to the planet they're all like gung-ho you know elbows and this and that stay frosty they go into the facility they just get completely annihilated and then they hold themselves up in the laboratory 
right? What's the first thing that they do? They go to the table, they bring up a map, look at the schematics, and they start making that plan. What if this happens? What if we have to go in this way? How do we go from point A to point B? And that was literally, I mean, yeah, it's a its a James Cameron funded tabletop exercise. That's what that oh, was. Man. Well, hey, hey, and, and as you're going to bring it up, let's really get in there because there's actually, even if you remember, there's their commander who hasn't actually experienced any real action before. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then he's having to try to make adjustments on the fly. And he's like, he's literally like flipping through, looking for perfect right. reminder. That's and, right. And that's when Sigourney Weaver like takes over and like rams through and it's awesome. Um, <laughs> but yeah, right. yeah, I mean, it's, it goes to the point, right? Like um, there's also the, the quote that gets thrown around a lot when we're talking about tabletops or practicing anything, right? Is the Mike Tyson one. Uh, which I don't even know if it's actually his quote or not, but by this point, it doesn't really matter. But it's everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the mouth, right? Yeah. Like when things start really happening, you want to be able to, to adjust quickly and really get, have a feel for like, okay, we have accommodated for, for uh, the, some different scenarios and we have a better feel. It's not just something that was on paper and no one actually really mm -hmm. walked through before. Correct. And, I mean, I think if you jump back into the aliens thing, I know this is getting taken over by uh, the movie studios today. It, when they're up in the in in the Sulaco, the big ship that you know they're using to transport, they're super confident, right? They're like, "Yeah, we got this," and they start making jokes about aliens. All of a sudden, you know, they're talking about like lunch, and you, know, you didn't like the cornbread and all this other stuff. That that overconfidence, thinking that you could just get in there, do what you need to do, and leave, right, was their main weakness. Well, exactly. And, I was gonna, I was going to say, Matt, if they tabletop going to the, <laughs> the, the the terraformer reactor, they wouldn't have had all these problems. They said, well, there's no, you know, so they, they didn't even really come up with a plan besides, hey, let's just go in there and figure out what's going on, which, you know, not sometimes really works, works, but sometimes, works, but sometimes it, doesn't. Sometimes exactly. gives every single person a really, really bad day. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, so I do think uh, part of it, again, interesting, bringing back to it, saying that the, you know, the the commander in that mission had no idea what was going on or, or hadn't been involved in the uh, in the the, the grunt work Strategy. of it, right? right? And that's important to keep in mind too when you're putting together tabletop exercises are who you want to include and in, in the participants that you want to have, right? And it's important to get people from every aspect of your business, a representative from every department. Now, it doesn't necessarily need to be absolutely everybody, but you know, if you you know. Are, don't take into consideration mm -hmm. a segment of the business. You have, you know, no idea what that impact has on them. And a uh, a great anecdote that I think of for uh, in Valiant that where that happened was um, we had a workflow where there were certain, you know, we work in tickets, and there was a certain ticket that needed to be put in a certain way for something to happen. And whenever I'd run across a ticket that wasn't done right, for you know, I'd be like, ah, I'm just going to fix this. And then I was uh, out of the office for a week. And one of when I came back, one of the other uh, employees said, hey, this process uh, is broken. It's not doing this automated thing anymore. I was like, well, it wasn't automated. I was doing that. So, you know, you need to go through and do these steps. That Those are the kinds of things where, you know, different departments interacting with each other oftentimes see what the, each other one is doing is just as magic. It's just, I don't know, this thing goes in and this thing comes out and don't have an understanding of what needs to be involved right. to do that. So having members of all of those teams, all of those departments involved is, is critical so that, you know, when you say like, oh, what happens when this thing is out, they can give you the, the real feedback of, well, these are the adjustments we're going to have to make and right. this is how it's going to impact everybody that works with us. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And let's just quickly, and I'm, I'm going to just run to the notes that we have here for today so we can keep on track because I just went completely like off the rails there. But yeah, when it comes to participants, there are certain things that you really need to look in, like you really need to find. Aside from having someone that could represent each operating unit within your business, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that they're going to be engaged in this. Mm -hmm. If someone's going to sit in the corner of a meeting and not give any input, they just created a blind spot for you. That That's Correct. a risk. Yeah. All right. They have to be willing to accept the defined scenario without modifications. You're, you're creating a scenario that you want to raise questions around. So if someone's going to have an alternate that makes it easier, that doesn't help you. That's another blind spot that could be created. Mm -hmm. And you have to be, <laughs> this is the most important one. I think it's one that it takes time for anyone to be able to embrace within business or, or, or life. You have to be able to, you have to be able to say that you don't have all the answers. You know, a, part, a big part of this is going, I don't know what happens now. Great, we're here to figure that out. You know, so the, the I don't know is encouraged in a way. Right, and 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 I think that 
I think that one of the first and most important things is saying, I don't know, or I don't have the answers has to be like, yeah, clear, clear the air before mm-hmm. you get started being like, I, I don't know, you know, when we do them internally, I, I mean, uh, we always kind of, when we started doing this more often, it was very much like, I, honestly, I, I don't even want people coming in with these answers right off the bat, because quite honestly, um, you you have a preconceived notion, right? Your your preconceived notion, your your kind of you might already uh, your own unconscious bias might be kicked mm-hmm. in. So you want to really eliminate that. It's really important, yeah. and mm-hmm. and so it's just, it just has to be done that way. In some ways, yeah. P- part of the goal of the tabletop is to get to the I don't know because it's the I don't knows where you can then expand what you're going to do and figure out right. what you're going to do in this controlled way as opposed to during an emergency. Oh man. Um, you know, I don't know yeah. during an emergency can be dangerous. I don't know. Table is great. Now we have home courage. Too. Yeah, now exactly. we have something to figure and out. Just to bring things back full circle, in, in space, nobody can hear you say, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we talked a little bit about the participants. But on the facilitator side, you really need to have someone that has the ability to control the pace and make sure that they, the, the initial scenario that you defined is used from start to finish. Right. You don't want factors to change because that's, again, going to introduce risks into yeah. what you're coming up with because your approach is going to be flawed. And I think it's really important uh, just for, for a facilitator to take, I say, good notes and keep track mm-hmm. of what happened because you can have this great conversation and then three hours later, everyone's like, I don't even know what we talked about. Yeah. Because we came with such a great conversation, but it kind of moves around in circles. So you need a dungeon master. You need, you need a DM. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's a that's, I mean, that's, that's, a new, that's a new title for uh, our business <laughs> continuity service is the Dungeon Master. I got to start sure. drinking coffee in solo cups. I'm getting a little too energized now. Um, okay. And also, you know, the, aside from being able to control the pace of the exercise, a facilitator needs to really help people become engaged. You know, they have to ask questions. They have to raise different points and, and try and get some different points of view going. And sometimes that means causing a, a, some mild conflict. You know, you want to hear people say, this is what we need to do. No, I think this is what we need to do. Great. Let's talk it out and figure out how we take both of these ideas and turn them into something that's really going to make sure that we get the result that we need when something is not going the way we want it to. Um, so now that we've covered some of the basics, what they're for, um, what people should be watching on Hulu this weekend, let's really <laughs> dig into the tabletop exercises. You know, I think that one of the, the great things about having Jonathan here with us today is that Ninja, along with some other members of the MSP community, did this great uh, Jurassic Sock event <laughs> a few weeks ago. And yeah, it was Jurassic Park themed. It was about a, uh, a breach taking place and the type of uh, incident response decisions that have to be made. And if you watch it, and we'll include it a link, we'll, we'll include a link in this when we're done. Uh, if you watch it, you'll see that the whole idea is that they were not prepared, and it became almost like a choose-your-own-adventure. What do we do? You know, do we do we pay the ransomware? Do we hire a forensic, a forensic investigator? And the audience helped kind of determine where things went. And at the end of the day, that was really just it was a tabletop exercise being acted out. And and that was a really cool thing, and it was it was honestly a, a great contribution to the community. We'll see right here is you can see we've got uh, Marnie, and we've got Jonathan here in my comment, which I think that's going. Um, but it, you'll see like there's a situation here where what should the IT ops and incident response team do next? And they were giving people options, and you know while this was acted out and and there was it was a bit of it was dramatized a bit to to make it entertaining and really kind of get people to understand the point of it. It's 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 not that different from what we're talking about today. Today is a, a meeting versus an exercise. That's kind of like a simulation of what's going on. Right. That's um, well. Thank you so much, Matt, for bringing that up. And I mean, that was a lot of fun. And yeah, not not every tabletop needs to have uh, dramatized uh, videos of people getting eaten by dinosaurs. But um, <laughs> but it kind of goes to the point where I, I, the, one of the discussion points that came out of that, which I thought was really cool um, and valuable, um, not just for uh, for the vendors that we worked with, uh, for our, for the MSPs that we were talking with, and then ourselves too, internally with Ninja actually, um, was uh, let's let's think about what tabletops can look like. And, and if I'm putting my perspective into um, uh, the folks who are maybe watching here um, as as a, um, a business owner and IT leader at a at, at a company, um, you know this in a, in a way tabletop. I think we can all understand practice makes perfect. You know you can it, it's, it's super important. You get the need for it. But then the questions that I have are kind of like, 
Um, okay, yeah, what does this actually look like? You mentioned, Matt, is it, is it just a meeting? Um, what's the scope of it? I'm, I'm super busy. Like it, now we're talking about bringing in different parts of the organization um, and getting them involved, taking their right. time too. And it's almost like a balance. And in, in, uh, this is what we were going through internally in Ninja. It's a balance of we want to do this the right way where it's going to be valuable. So we do see the value in, in blocking enough time for it, getting the right people involved. At the same time, we don't want to overthink it. And and I and I I I was very um, with putting together the Jurassic Sock event. I really wanted to put that uh, a takeaway being, hey, you can start small with this and take it in bite-sized chunks. Um, it doesn't have to be this elaborate, you know, thing. George, I think you mentioned in the beginning, it doesn't have to be the super elaborate thing that you're going right. down. And and uh, you know, you almost picture like a tabletop, like a a dark room with monitors and like, you know, everyone Winston like Churchill and cigars. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you don't have like the war board where you're, like, you're moving pieces along and whatever. whatever. No, I mean, this could be um, in, in a way, I guess I'm curious for you guys, if you had feedback of um, how do you make the balance of making it actually useful and, and having good takeaways versus like, don't make it overly complicated where you keep putting it off, make this actually something that's kind of bite-sized and that you can take, take care of. So I think I, I, I'll give you a thing. I'll, I'll I'll, I'll give us our, I'll give you the live fire event that we did like for real uh, for us, the one that, that, and we had done this before, but never to like, uh, never we had to do it in a way that was the, uh, to be real actually. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, in early February in 2020 last year, prior to like the lockdown pandemic, we, we had a manager meeting where all of our key managers kind of sat together and we ran through like, okay, let's, let's, let's walk through all the different scenarios with this pandemic, be it like nothing happens. Great, nothing happens. Then, you know, and then and then we kept walking through each stage and what mm -hmm. we can think of from our experience in this conversation and keeping notes. And, you know, from like nothing happens all the way to like electrical system disruptions and food source, which is completely out of our control as an MSP, yeah. right? Like we don't, we don't, we're not, we're not, you know, we're not making policy and we're not, you know, in government or you know, executives like that in that way. But you know, kind of walking through each possible place and where our company has responsibility mm -hmm. and how we how it impacts both us as a uh, as a service provider, how it impacts us delivering, uh, you know, to our internal staff and making sure that, that they're being, you know, they're being paid and they're, you know, they're mm -hmm. having communication and that they're working and, you know, and working with our with our clients to say, hey, we got to, you know, we got to move, you know, 2000 plus people to work to be remote or not work at all but be able to get back to work at a certain a future date. So we ran through that in about a two hour meeting. It didn't take forever mm -hmm. because we all kind of were thinking about it. And so everyone was a little bit prepared for it. And we just sat and just did it. And then we came up with some notes. And, and the most interesting thing is that I, I felt that we were a very well prepared company for, for, for COVID, for the pandemic, because we know uh, of our, of our, of our client base, very few people I think had a uh, really bad transition because we you know we had been you know moving towards our uh, to more of a cloud base yeah. and solution we for years set, uh, our conditions for what we were going to do and when that way when the time came to do those things it wasn't a conversation and discussion about what should we do it was just enact the plan i mean we said that right. uh you know what if the new york city schools public schools close we're going to close the office and when that happened, it wasn't a conversation of, well, do we close the office? What do we do? When it happened, we said, okay, we're kicking in the thing that we decided to do. And that is, you know, part of the power of having that, that, mm -hmm. that tabletop right. and, and going through that is the, is making the decision ahead of time and being able to quickly enact the decision when it's critical. It when, also when gives you, you the it. ability to take the time to put energy towards yourself and your family and people mm -hmm. when you know exactly what's going to happen with the workplace and the systems that we depend on. And I think that's the other part that's super important. It really mm -hmm. helps put you up to do the things that are quite frankly, right. more important to you. You know, well, the job's important, family's more. Yeah. And, this I, and, that. And, I, and I think that, and it's a, and this kind of go back to something you, you mentioned, Jonathan, about time. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's management's responsibility to have these kind of plans in place that's our as, as a manager as a leader you can't always be 100 percent focused on growth and that sort of thing you have to also sometimes you have to play a little defense <laughs> yeah. it, because sometimes defense becomes good offense because i i, I felt for us um it's due you know, care. it was due care right it, it helped us we we we, got, we we were i felt we got ahead of it to some degree and then 
and then we were able to execute fairly well. And then, you know, and now I think most the bulk of our customers and the people we work with day in, day out came out of it fairly well. Um, just, just, just by talking to clients, that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. I, I think, I think it's, I don't think, I don't think it's not an investment in your future. It's just, it's just, it's not like, hey, how do we add 10% to the bottom line? This is more like, oh, how do we maintain our 98% of our customer base, you know, right. or yeah. that sort of thing. Well, let's, I'm going to just, I'm going to switch uh, gears just a little bit because I want us to really dig in here. But I, I think it's also important to say that if we didn't have that plan, we probably wouldn't be doing the live stream right now because mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for we sure. prepared at the beginning of the pandemic gave us the opportunity to think about new things to do and different ways to communicate with people. Right. So a lot of um, what's happened with our own trajectory as a business is is due to that plan when you think about it. And that, that's, a, sure. that's something that definitely needs to be said. Mm -hmm. um, now, originally, I wanted to talk a little bit about what goes into a tabletop today, but I'd rather just jump into the tabletop and go through it <laughs> step by step. Yep. I think that's going to work so much yeah, better, especially with where we are today. This is good stuff. So, all right, this is our tabletop exercise template, and this is available for free from our website. I put the link up earlier. If you give me one second, I'll just bring it back here so that people have it just in case. And uh, it's a PowerPoint that you can modify however you'd like. What we've done is we've gone ahead and put some basic information in it, and you'll see that as we go through the information that is related to our demonstration today is in gray. That's something you can simply completely wipe out of the template make it your own and begin using this, um, especially after having watched this video. So let me just get a couple things set up. I don't like, I can't see Justin's face. We're gonna remove the little value <laughs> ladder. His face is so much yeah. more important. Um, so let's just jump right in, all right? A little bit of information on the template. Like I said, use it to help facilitate your own tabletop exercises. Um, businesses have different functions. They have different needs. They have different concerns. So don't take the um, the scenarios that we've put in here in examples as examples and stick to those. Figure out things that are gonna keep, if there's something as a business owner that keeps you up at night, you might wanna do a tabletop about it. And that may exactly. be a great way to get your feet, you know, just dip the toes into the water. Yeah. Um, and we did include two scenarios using a fictional company called Rust and Paint. So George, before we get started, do you wanna give the description so it makes more sense to people? Oh, Rust and Paint is a company that, uh that is our, our fictional kind of uh, go-to brand of, of kind of things that are kind of held together with, uh, you, know, you know, people talk about bailing wire and chewing gum and uh, rust and paint is that kind of company. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> so, so it's, it's a fictional manufacturing company located in the mid-Atlantic mid company. Uh, what they manufacture, I'm not really sure, but it's, uh, it's either rust or paint. Rust or, or paint or maybe both, depending on what they're doing. <laughs> Um, but uh, it's it's a, it's a little of an analog for how things are not necessarily as uh, robust as you assume they'd be on the first blush. Uh, a lot of things you see in, in this, I think New York is a great example of it. Our infrastructure is pretty beat up at times. And you mm -hmm. always, in these days, you're, you're in a subway, you're like, I think the only thing holding it together is this rust and paint, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's like a beam or a, you know, something like that. So that's where that comes from. But Thank you. Um, that's our that's our that's our frictional company. So, Matt, let's go through uh, some of the tabletops. All right. So before you get a tabletop going, you have to get some prerequisites out of the way. And uh, this isn't a huge exploratory exercise. A lot of this should be something that uh, most people can answer relatively quickly. So what is our core mission? What are we here to do? What are we trying to accomplish? And just to clarify, Rust and Paint does provide the best products for repairing and protecting industrial facilities. They're yes. all about coatings. They're about removing. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Matt. It, 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 it's more of an anti-Rust and Paint. Yes. Yeah. yeah <laughs> okay. But the thing is, is that they've got a sister company that causes erosion and oxidation of ferrous materials, and the whole thing just is a cycle. It's a vicious cycle. <laughs> it's a synergy. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so basically, it's a it's, it's a Brooklyn Queens Expressway. <laughs> That's what you're saying. You, you finish at one end and you have to go back to the start and redo it's it all. It's a constant process. Exactly. Gotcha. It's okay. a, a, iterative improvement. I mean, that's entire month that we've talked about is iterative improvement. Exactly. Um, what does is, what is Rust and Paint consider to be an interruption to, to them that's not tolerable? And that's any condition that prevents the manufacturing or sale of their products. It's anything that's going to prevent them from being able to generate revenue. And that's the next question. What are the chief sources of revenue? And in this case, they come from B2B sales. Right. Uh, how are transactions between vendors and customers, me, me, between you know rust and paint and vendors slash customers initiated? Uh, we have a team of account managers who handle sales after someone's come on board with us. And we also have a really great online por portal for placing orders, super convenient. In case anyone's wondering, yes, this is very much like Dunder Mifflin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, how, how are transactions completed? We know where they're taking place. How are they completed? Once transactions completed, we ship directly from our manufacturing facility. Um, are there any outside revenue generation 
uh, any types of uh, outside revenue generation that serve the core mission, we partner with other organizations and that's really it. Now, the reason I said the whole Dunder Mifflin thing aside to make get like get another television and movie reference in <laughs> is that when I put this together, I imagined this rust and paint office being very much like Dunder Mifflin's offices. <laughs> you've got a main office area where you've got your account managers, accounting, management, sales and marketing people, you know, those folks. And then you have another area that's like a warehouse style space for manufacturing and fulfillment. Right. Just kind of, it's good to get that in your head, especially, especially since this is a completely fictional organization. You're working on your own, you're going to have a perfect picture of what's going on here. No worries about that. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to talk about people. Which positions are critical to operations? Meaning which who who who's actually getting things done? You know, there are a lot of positions and everyone plays a role, but sometimes there are ones that you just you you can't live without. Right. And in the case of Rust and Paint, there's the operations manager, watches the floor, coordinates, really is the communicator between upstairs and downstairs. Uh, you've got your business services teams. Those consist of sales accounting and human resources. You have your account management team who communicate with your customers and you've got your manufacturing floor and shipping teams, the folks that actually get things together and right. get them out the door. And uh, it's important here to remember that you're not talking about leadership only, your people, right. all of your people, someone from each one of the operating units should be listed here. That That's critical. You don't wanna have a blind spot, like I said earlier, because you've left someone out because mm -hmm. you didn't think they were necessarily critical to operations. Everyone's critical in their own way and you have to determine who those people are going to be. Next are the systems. And yeah, keep in mind that we did put our people before the systems. The people are gonna be your most important asset. Um, just a few questions here. What systems are critical oper for, uh, for, for operations? What can you not live without? And in our case, we wanna make sure that accounts payable and receivable are running. We want to make sure manufacturing controls are up and running. How, how do you build product if you don't have your manufacturing controls? E-commerce and shipping, if you can't fulfill something, you're not going to make any money. So this is right. super basic direct stuff we're going, we're going into here. Yep. Uh, what systems are required to service internal customers? And at the end of the day, that's really accounting and manufacturing. Super important to have, especially in the case of the good folks at Rust and Paint. Um, what systems are required to service your external customers, the people that are you're actually selling product to, e-commerce and shipping. Um, now, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. Who are the owners of each system? Right. And it's important to make it very clear that when we talk about owners of a system, that doesn't mean who is maintaining it, it's who is using it, who right. is getting some sort of value from it, who is it that's putting the data in and getting some type of results out. Right. Who, who, well, who's, who's, uh, who's, resp who's responsible for that function Mm -hmm. that uses that system as the exactly. owner, as opposed to like, you know, as I said, the IT, because I, a lot of times people like the IT people kind of say, well, the IT person, you maintain it, you, you own it, but that's not how, that's not really what we're talking about here. It's really important. To, to, you operate it. It's, it operate, I think yeah, operate right. is really the word to use here. Right. Um, and our systems maintained by an internal staff or a third party. And uh, this is this company, they've got some real, uh, they, they value strategy. They work with an outside company for the most part, you know, to handle basics of infrastructure, but they do have an internal IT team to handle their line of business applications because they do have some fairly involved manufacturing systems in place. Right. All right. Scenario one. Now, this is the one we're going to go over today. There are There is a second scenario that um, you can read along with after this is done. Uh, today's scenario is going to be related to power loss due to an extreme weather event. So again, pretty timely, especially since we are in the, the Northeast, kind of like Northern Atlantic portion of the United States. So right. um, how about this? I, I feel like um, I'm talking way too much. Jonathan, you want to give us a dramatic introduction as to what's going on here? <laughs> oh man, all right. <laughs> Um, yeah, extreme weather event. I mean, I'm picturing uh, all the great movies from like the early 2000s where like I'm seeing like New York. Everyone loves to destroy New York anyway. Right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm seeing like water pouring in and everything. Yeah. Mark Wahlberg's um, running down the street. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always Wahlberg. But yeah, uh, well, OK. Yeah. So we've got a hurricane coming and and all jokes aside, I mean, obviously there's very serious, uh, uh, not so long ago memory for people where this is actually yeah. going down, right? So right. in a very real serious way. Um, but yeah, hurricane warning uh, issued in the area. Now Rust and Paint's headquarters um, kind of right in that eye. They're, they're anxiously looking at those weather reports, right? Where Where's it going to go? Right. Um, and they have to start gearing up. Um, I, I think I'm going to kick it back over to you guys, actually, because you get real experience with this. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Yes, yeah. we have. Um, 
you know, JP and I were both working in, you know, we and, and Matt as well, uh, in terms of when, in here in New York when you know we had we had our kind of big hurricane event, which I know people in Florida are like shh, but <laughs> no, no one builds things in New York for hurricanes. Yeah. <laughs> that, the whole city's it's all really, rust and paint. It's all <laughs> rust and paint. But that being said. Um, you know, so and just living through this, you know, high winds, uh, uh, flooding, and just general mayhem caused by a storm. You know, that we damaged power to the to our facility, which is both our HQ and our manufacturing and shipping. So we have our, you know, we have a uh, local data center on site because of the, the nature of the work we do. So now we have nothing working. Everything's mm -hmm. offline. Uh, we're, you know, obviously we're dealing with working with our facilities team. And uh, we have no word from local, the local power and or uh, authorities of what's happened to county. So we're just kind of we're kind of figuring out what's what's next. So what happens mm -hmm. next, Matt? Yeah. Well, next is well, now that we've set the stage. Nope. Did we lose well, Matt? I don't know. Maybe we lost Matt. Right. Hopefully, we lose him. This is actually a good tabletop thing, right? Yeah. So exactly. Like, now now that we've we've lost Matt, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, you, got, you got to have redundancy. And this is kind of funny. I mean, it's it's um. Hopefully, he'll come back soon, but. Um, talking with some other uh, vendors who participated in, in our Jurassic Sock thing, one of them was mentioning um, uh, their spouse being at a bank and going through tabletops. And one of the, the external company coming in to help them with the tabletop has a scenario where they basically got a couple of the leaders. Um, it may have been like the chief exec and, and another leader in the room and said, OK, you guys, you're out. Like you got right. there's something happened in the incident, but you're not available. So mm -hmm. they kick, literally kicked them out of the room. And yep. said, like, you know, how, how are you going to uh, continue here? So um, who's, uh, who's going to make decisions? Who's going to mm -hmm. do things like that? So yeah. uh, we're going to keep we're going to keep going. Yeah, uh, we'll run through without the uh, without, without the, the deck. Uh, PowerPoint, but we can, uh, can run through. I, I think for me, it, you know, we're talking extreme weather event uh, and, you know, your mind goes to all the, the craziness that can happen. But what's good, another good piece about doing a tabletop like this is really the impact is loss of power. And that can happen even if it's not an extreme weather event. That could happen for lots of reasons. Maybe, you know, somebody crashes into the the pole outside and knocks it down and or something going on. So uh, whatever event you're simulating and you're running through, the lessons you take from that can very easily be applied to other things as well. And it becomes it helps inform that that full uh, that full plan. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, a lot, so, you know, so now, you know, if you imagine our, our, like what, what, what the, uh, and so now that we're, our, our facility's down, mm. we have no IT systems available. Uh, we're on emergency lighting for the next 12 hours. Uh, so what happens next, right? Like, what do we yeah. do now? So I think the first question that I'd ask is, I'm again, focusing on, on the people. Do we send everybody home? Do we tell people that they're, you know, like you, go home with no pay because we're shut down? Do we tell everybody that they're use, we're taking a PTO? Day? Like, how do we, like, that's right. the first question to figure out. And I think uh, I really, I are, I'd want to get feedback from someone from our operations and HR team as to what we can do and what we right. can't do. I mean, from a, uh, uh, the, put my, uh, uh, <laughs> green uh, little visor on i'd say oh yeah well nobody gets paid because we're not working but obviously that's not uh <laughs> not yeah. uh not gonna fly too well so yeah, exactly uh, yeah we'd need to ask and we'd have to have those people involved in in our meeting in our tabletop exercise to be able to ask them like yo what do we do in that situation exactly and and and, and do that in advance right have have an idea yeah. what you're gonna do and also a communication plan mm -hmm. for how you're gonna communicate this let's say this happens the power goes out in the middle of the night how I you know you don't want people driving to the facility that's not working, um, not working, not doing anything, nothing's happening. So you know from there, what do we do to to say all right? So we're going to communicate to the staff that hey the facility is down, but then we have to start communicating to our key people, right? Our facilities mm -hmm. manager, our sales and oper our sales folks who need to talk to our clients. Right, so we need a communication plan. I think that's a really, yeah. a really. I think out of all things, I think one of the things that we, we we found just doing our own tabletops and just doing with customers is that communication plan is the thing that really separates uh, a successful uh, recovery mm -hmm. from one that's just chaos. And people go back, man, that was really bad. Yeah, you know, you know people. You know, I think that's a really important thing. So it's like it's like okay, so the systems are all down. We communicated to our staff. Don't come in, stand by for further instructions, 
how you do that is a multitude of ways. Um, we can, and if you have any questions about that, please ask us because we've done it mm -hmm. for customers and text messages and, you know, using cloud, you know, cloud chat applications. There's so many different ways to do this mm -hmm. email, personal email. Yeah. And I think that's so. an important part, uh, important point uh, as well too. And, and as uh, if we had the, the deck up, we could run through and see that some of it is uh, not necessarily using the systems that you have in place. Now you might discover when you're running through this, that systems that you have are not uh, up to the task of what you need them to do in these kinds of events. And right. in the in the the Rust and Paint case, in the scenario we had, uh, the phone system for Rust and Paint was a, a locally hosted system uh, so that when people were calling in, uh, they'd get a busy signal and we don't have a way of, of using phones to, uh, to reach people. Uh, if in our communication plan that we're putting together, we decide that we really want to be able to still communicate with customers via phone, we still want to be able to have that, we'd need to revisit uh, our our local phone our phone system and either right. build redundancies into it or have it hosted externally somewhere that has those redundancies built into it. Right. So, yeah. you know, exactly. Sorry, John. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, George. I was just going to hop in. Um, I, I, I did get a Slack from Matt and he says, um, I mean, this is not... He says this isn't planned, and I, I think I believe him. <laughs> he's, yeah, I believe him. He was having yeah, a good, he was too happy. He, he, he says, would uh, take himself off when he's on air. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he would never take himself out of the limelight. I get it. Um, yeah, no, he well, but he's saying his entire neighborhood went down. Um, that he's he's going to try to get back on. But yeah, I mean, exactly. here we go. We're talking about a loss of power, and ironically enough, um, our 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 show leader who has the deck uh, has lost power. Exactly. But. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it sounds like from a general uh, uh, plan here, and I know this is kind of difficult through the deck, but just to kind of zoom back out a little bit, um, loss of power. It sounds like you guys, we, we're in the, for the scenario where your minds went first was okay. It's, it's about communicating with staff first mm -hmm. to kind of get everybody come together to be like, uh, we're experiencing our, our incident. Oh, look, here's Matt. Yeah, back. All right, he's back. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're talking about staff. First, yeah, so like, um, okay, just really quickly. Oh yeah, go ahead. I think not only was dot. that not planned, but um, a power truck and a cable vision truck just went past my house. So something happened. Something happened. <laughs> it's it's the nature. Amazing. It's it's, a, it's what happens. So what, Matt, where we are is on the deck is just kind of identifying our systems, talking about communication and mask on. It's okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, all right. So uh, you know. So I think I think you know once. And so and kind of like in this communication plan. So one thing we we, we sh you know we should really start thinking about is like okay, so. We had this power incident. Let's say the power comes back two days later. Or we're back working. What did we learn? Like, what did we learn in an event? Or you know, and, and what could we prevented with the tabletop? Mm -hmm. You know, we could have said, okay, we have the local phone system. Look at a VoIP or another communication platform. Um, power. Hey, maybe we need a, maybe we need a better like a power bank or a diesel generator or a gas fire generator that we can put mm -hmm. in place. Or we offsite all that material, all that so those systems, key IT systems to a uh, to a data center or a cloud service provider. And remember as well too, part of this is not just the uh, the IT, but we're uh, saying right. that uh, that Rust and Paint has a manufacturing floor and right. like a local warehouse. Right. So there are questions that come from that as well that we you know don't have the answers to for things, but uh, hypothetically, uh, if uh, for example, how long can the manufacturing floor have no power before there's not just the loss of sales, but the loss of material? Like, are there uh, components that need to be refrigerated or or chemicals that need to be stored in a particular way right. before you know? And how long can those hold out before they are uh, they're no longer? Uh, valid or no longer uh, useful. Right. Uh, and then based on that, you need to calculate out, okay, how much does it cost for us to sustain, like, let's say, for argument's sake, there's a two-day life shelf life of unrefrigerated rust and paint goo, I don't know. Um, <laughs> and we then can look at, okay, well, like you said, we can get a gas and, or, or diesel generator or something else in to keep that running. How much does it cost to do that? How much do we stand to lose by having uh, that done? And is that worth doing? Or do we say that in an event where power is gone for more than two days, we're going to have to forfeit these materials. So we need to make sure that our insurance covers Correct. us for doing it that. A lot of, a lot of, in the end, what we're really, gain, what we're trying to, um, really, what we need to be able to do is uh, 
go through all these different scenarios and, mm -hmm. and come up with solutions to each one and then put some kind of both quantity, qu quantifiable and qualifiable uh, na uh, impact analysis on it. You know, if, you know, you can mitigate this risk by putting in, you know, a city sized generator in because you're a giant manufacturing facility, but I mean, it makes sense, right? From mm -hmm. a financial perspective, like two days of downtime doesn't necessarily cost that. Uh, we've worked with uh, uh, some food production folks over the years and they put in literally a facility wide generator because the cost of losing their, um, their, uh, their food products was so high after like mm -hmm. the third event, they're like, okay, this is bonkers. Like we, we yeah. know for the price. And so, you know, you, you really have to do that kind of, um, you know, you really have to do that business impact analysis. You mm -hmm. really have to do it. And I think that's the first, the, the t so if you think about your or, a hierarchy of how you do things, it's, you know, tabletop first, go through scenarios, do it more than once, kind of play with it and be like, okay, what's this? And then create the scenarios that you're going to be able to, that you're going to really hone in on as the most likely things that can impact your business. You know, we always tend to look for uh, the dinosaur killer event, like, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, a yeah. meteorite is going to hit the hit Russ and Payne's facility. But more than likely, it's going to have no power for two days because someone yeah. hit a pole down the road and we only have a single feed of power going to our facility, which is, you know, one of those things where if you're doing a good tabletop, someone, you know, and working with other customers over the years, we've done this, where we're like, so, you know, we had a, we worked with a customer at a place in a warehouse and we were like, you know, there's only, and it was a key uh, data processing for them. And we're like, mm -hmm. you know, there's one pole going to the facility. You should really get either like microwave or another backup, backup internet connection that isn't, impact, isn't impacted by, you know, a truck. Yeah. And, and they were like, well, you know, we're willing to take the risk. And then lo and behold, you know, a year later, a truck backed into the pole and they had no internet for three days because they had to get someone to put a pole back and yeah. that sort of thing. Hey, and it guys, was struggling. I'm, I'm back. I have returned. I see. That was, that I see. was amazing. We're sitting here talking about scenarios and contingency planning and everything else. What happens? A little pop. The power goes out. My cell phone loses its signal. Internet goes down. I look over and I see a power authority truck go past the house and an optimum internet truck go by. That was that was not uh, planned, but that was an amazing uh, uh, demonstration yeah. of what can go what goes on. Which also, also I think illustrates an important play thing that you want to get to in your tabletop exercise, which is you need to. What well, we said before, the I don't knows. You need to get yourself to those I don't knows mm -hmm. so that and, and and so we'll take what just happened with Matt as a great example that, okay, you've got internet and power. If your internet and power goes out, yeah, no problem. Your laptop has got battery and it's charged and you set your phone up as a hotspot. Exactly. But that doesn't work if whatever took cell out phone. the power takes out the cell phone. Cell so phone. now the question is, it what works. do we do if not, how do we get Matt back online? But what do we do if Matt is completely unavailable? Uh, uh, and that becomes- uh, that We was... actually usually have a contingency for that, but we're actually running a little uh, low on staff today. On, yeah, on it's Friday. Have yes. A couple of people with admin rights to get in, and we I was going to say we yeah. need a backup to the backup on that regard. So, but and um, there you go, and that those are the things that you want to get to in the tabletop to the point where like, you really do want to take it to the point of where you say, well, yeah, at that point it doesn't matter anymore because exactly. then you've gotten, then you've covered all the contingencies that you can realistically, uh, realistically get through, and you've come up not necessarily with things that you can do right now for it but but ways things that you know that you'll need to put in place things that you can work towards that you can build into a plan uh to then be able to mitigate those risks and once again it's just so important these are all business level decisions they're mm -hmm. not it decisions yeah. i think that in t and, and think so often um just in my career and and, and working with customers and justin we lot of times people say business continuity that's an it person's job and it's uh, push it across the table and it's like that's not really what it is. Yeah. Business, maybe disaster recovery or systems recovery, that's an IT function. Mm -hmm. But business continuity is, and risk mitigation is 1,000% management yeah. responsibility. Yeah, because our response to that is a lot of times, yeah, your all of your IT systems will be back online and running in the cloud in less than four hours. What, how are you going to run? Like, what do you do? Your office is, is not right. accessible. How do you communicate with people? You're, you're in this case where there's physical uh, product. How do you do that? And that's one aspect of it. I think another uh, piece of it that we uh, um, didn't necessarily look at here, but this weather event in our, in our 
scenario, you know, maybe affected our facility, but maybe it also affects uh, the local area. Maybe it also yeah. affects uh, yeah. suppliers. Right. Maybe it affects, you know, uh, the ability for our trucks to get gas. Like, okay, the the facility is back online, but we can't get fuel for our trucks to to have delivery. Or, you know, yeah, oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Supply chain disruption due to yeah, yeah. supplier shortages. Yeah, this is something that that uh, has come up. Um, uh, well, going back to the Jurassic Talk thing and, and, and talking about cyber incidents uh, in general, um, it, the, the the added scenario of, okay, you're not the only person looking for help right now. Um, you know, there's a limited amount of incident response providers. In this scenario, the, there's a limited number of trucks. I mean, they, it sounds like they whizzed by Matt's place and got things <laughs> uh, set up really right. quickly. But what if it's a broader area and like there's a big line of folks yeah. you're behind? I mean, it, it, you're not the only operation looking for help right now. And Correct. Taking that into account is is a is a good uh, variable. Exactly. And and once again, and, and and Justin touched on it earlier is if it's something that is pretty vast and almost impossible for you to do, look at insurance to mitigate some of that risk. That's mm -hmm. what insurance is purpose. Uh, insurance is always one of the things you never want to use it, but man, you really want to have it when you need it. So, yeah. and, it, and that should be a discussion with all your different facets of your business and insurance broker and, and you, you know, you lean on them for some risk man, some mm -hmm. assist you with your risk, especially if you're a small medium business, you're not gonna have a risk manager on staff. That's like a pretty yeah. corp, large corporate position, but you should leverage your different teams to kind of put together uh, a good, um, a good plan of attack. Yeah. Involved, I like to uh, think of the uh, the analogy of of you know preparing for a fire in in your home. It's you have you know the the things that you do to mitigate it. So you have you know you don't uh, leave oily rags around. You have the things <laughs> to do to help with it. You know you know you keep fire extinguishers and you know where you are. You have your your plan, your evacuation plan. You tell you know your family, okay, if there's a fire, we all meet at the Seven Eleven on the corner. That's where we go. Uh, and this is how we let everybody know we're okay. And you have uh, insurance that covers replacing the things that that you lost in the fire and you make those decisions uh, for them. And you have, let's say, a fireproof safe that you keep in the house that you put things in that, uh, that you want to protect. And those are all things that you don't decide to do when you smell smoke, you decide to do those things <laughs> ahead of time and you have yeah. them there. And it's the exact yeah. same thing here. It's, it's, you figure out what you're going to do. You figure out what the mitigations you're going to have to help you weather, whatever the issue is. And you have your insurance to cover for the things that you are, that, you know, you're not going to be able to protect against, and it's going to be recovery, not prevention. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So guys, we are actually coming up on 50 minutes of this stream. Uh, I know. Clearly went off the rails. And yeah. it's funny because it's like literally the realest stream we've ever done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. seriously. <laughs> happening. Um, so what I'd like to do is first off, apologize to the audience. That was unfortunate. We just happened with the power incident. But I think if it were to happen in any episode, it was perfect that it happened. Oh, seriously. Um, it really worked. Sure that we make it clear that the templates that we were using today are available from our website for free. Just go to thevaliantway.com slash tabletop and you can uh, have those sent to your email. And I just want to take a couple of minutes to just do some closing notes on here and a little bit of housekeeping and, and get into next week. But beforehand, we are going to do this again and we are going to record it because I think it's, it's a very important... Um, way to explain and demonstrate the importance yep. of tabletop so we will have that done in the next week yep. or so yeah we're gonna do something we're gonna do something pretty fun with it i think a little more a little more a little more dramatic it may, take, <laughs> it may happen in space it may yeah. happen. Uh, nice this, this is sos anyway um <laughs> but yeah, but i think it's so I, important and i think that the, the what if is what if, if you're going to walk away with anything from watching us today and the fumbling and the the good and the bad it's the what if what if a hurricane does make its way to us. What if there's an earthquake? What if there are floods? What if a member of our team is here today and gone tomorrow for one of many reasons? That what if is 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 incredibly important. And the more time you spend on that, the more the tabletop exercise goes from being a chore to gold. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. So you you totally nailed it. How do you make this not a chore and actually something? <laughs> Uh, because yeah. and we were joking about the space stuff and like the dinosaurs. Or I don't think you have to go to that kind of like creative uh, depth or whatever. But I, I do think there's something important here where um, uh, presenting this to staff and also just the way you think about it yourself um, as, as a business leader, like this is a good opportunity to, to it, it's not meant to be a downer or, or a thing mm. that gets everybody freaked out. Right. And, and right. just in your point of like getting to those, I don't know answers should be a celebrate. There should be excitement there versus like, 
uh, like it shouldn't be deflating, right? It should be actually like, awesome. We're going to walk out of this with a whole bunch of stuff that we can do and we don't have to do it all at once. We can come up with a plan about it and we can work with our trusted people like you guys who, who help us work through things like this and prioritize and plan out. But now, now we have this list. We were able to, to do something actionable. This is all mm -hmm. a positive exercise that Correct. we can also have a little fun with too. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And even when you get that list, as soon as you do the, the very first smallest thing on that list, you're one step safer, more secure than you were prior. Right. You know, it's, it's, and you know, so let's just be real about it. You're going to sleep better at night as well. It's, well, yeah. it's, a, it's cumulative and iterative. Yeah. If you think of it that way, it, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's self. It's self actualizing. It keeps going, and you know, it's a, it's a it, bit of a flywheel situation. Once exactly, again. exactly. So great. So, all right. Well, look. Thank you to everyone for today. Um, I I take these situations seriously, but I'm just laughing at how much that failed on my end today. It's just <laughs> great. It's, uh, and Jonathan, it's real. thank you for joining us. You know, yes, uh, you and I talk all the time, and it was great to have a conversation in a slightly different venue. And um, everyone, next week is going to be a really great final episode in our iterative improvement block and it's we're looking at ourselves again here talking about the tech stack that we use to service our customers and how over the years it's been refined and reconfigured and optimized uh to where it is today and yeah. just kind of use that to explain um that even the the big tools the big things that we use to lift heavy problems and and, and provide solutions do need to change from time to time to make sure that we are meeting the needs of the customers and that we have and really bringing yeah very uh, high quality experiences to them when it comes to technology. So that's next week. Uh, that will be next Thursday at 1030. No more of this switching around <laughs> thing. I'm going to exactly. go get the diesel generator out and, you know, do a little round, <laughs> do a little table topping here at the house uh, on, um, <laughs> on up time. Get a Starlink. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone Excellent. has anything else to, to, to pitch in before we go, no, it's not. No, I just, want, I just want to say thank you, John, for joining us. It yeah, was great yeah, having you know. here. Uh, super fun as always. And uh, this is what it, it just this is a top of this tabletop and this kind of iterative improvements like a really uh important uh topic for me because i just think you know you generally in our business particularly i don't think it's a game of like massively forward it's like refinement 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 and that's mm -hmm. just after many years of working it, it's like it's it, it's it's so complex that i don't think you can make these monstrous changes very mm -hmm. easily so you have to really kind of hone in on that so this is a way to do it so thank you. Yeah, thank you. I and I, I just want to thank you guys for having me on again. And I'll, and I'll just say, I know a lot of people watching, uh, uh, especially if this is not their first one, already feel this way. But I'm just completely blown away about you how much you guys put out there. I mean, you mentioned before the call, you're up to like was this eighty something? Like you, eighty two, eighty two, wow. amazing. And so you you built up such a great library. Um, I love the way that you guys, the way you focus and and uh, provide very actionable. Uh, real world stuff and to that into all yeah. the great sources like the like the like this episode for example you don't just talk about it you also <laughs> provide a template where people can right. actually download something that's going to help them um just really well done i think you guys are doing amazing thank work and um thank you and thank uh, you. thanks for having me on i appreciate it anytime yeah, anytime yeah. um all so right. with that uh i always try to end this with something special i always try to go to the jerry springer thing i always mess it up <laughs> it comes through in the clutch what we're gonna say is have an excellent day. It's Friday. Have a great weekend. And uh, yeah. take a little time to enjoy the view. Stay exactly. frosty. Stay frosty. Stay frosty. <laughs>